Well, you don't see CJ's this clean very often, so it's the perfect candidate for a little bit of an engine swap, you know, put something else underneath that horsepower garage, horsepower dumpster. I know another term that's a little worse when you're talking about ladies. Front axle, rear axle, transmission, transfer case, uh, spring over. Can't wait to see how this one turns out. All right, so there's Jeff's, and that's spring over on 35s, our roll cage extension. But look at this, the little baby brother of Jeff's. Here's the before, cruising, one finger, all stock. Uh, I'd say a fairly low mile. It's cool to drive these Jeeps when they're totally stock. I mean, they're fun as well, but you know as well as I know, we need horsepower. I wanna let this sucker eat. Well, this one's been a long time coming. This is Darren's 85 CJ7, and uh, we just got done working our magic on it. Darren's all the way from Alberta, Canada, and he drove this Jeep all the way down here on a trailer for us to build it. It was bone stock when we got it, and uh, we've done a few modifications. First time working on a Canadian Jeep, so it does get a little bit confusing. Uh, some of the stuff isn't in our normal units like for instance kilometers an hour on the speedo i think it's like kpa on the oil pressure but uh when you're driving down the freeway you think you're really going fast but just kilometers per hour but it does get on it let's uh see how this is taking off here yep we definitely put something under the hood of this thing didn't we Woo! God, these things are fun to drive. Well, I think uh, the only thing to do is kind of pull out on the highway here and let it eat and see what happens. So here we go. Nice wide open road. While we're sitting here waiting to pull out, you notice it's nice and quiet, just a little rumble. Um, we went ahead and did dual two and a half into single three inch with a three inch Magnaflow. Keeps it nice and quiet, lets it breathe. We don't want it to be obnoxious. So let's see if we can't get a gear here.
brakes work amazing. Transmission shifts awesome. All the dash is all stock looking, period correct. It's a little bumpy, she's on leaf springs, but overall drives nice, even on bumpy roads, the 37s, you know, one finger cruising. Nice little Thursday afternoon drive in the old CJ7. So when Darren and I first talked about his CJ7, he had seen the other black CJ we built for Ken, and he basically said that's what he was looking for. So the whole idea on this build is to be a full sleeper, but a complete resto mod. So new engine, new transmission, new transfer case, but have a look almost kind of period correct. Well, as you're sitting in the cockpit of this thing, there's really nothing in here that makes it look like a newer Jeep. I mean, it looks like 1985. So as you can see, we went ahead and did our stanchions and our roll cage in this thing, grab handles, got to have the oh shit handle. Um, even shortened the visors so they still go up and down while you're driving and miss the roll cage, miss the mirror. Um, custom bikini top that snaps on here and doesn't flap in the wind, that's key. So the bikini top stays on all the time, even when you put the hard top on. Um, in this console, we went ahead and added the dome light in the rear and then built our speaker cans in. We put speakers in the stock spot in the dash and then as far as the dash goes, the idea is keep this dash absolutely looking like factory. So we hooked all the stock gauges up to the LS motor. These are all mechanical gauges. Everything hooked in great, hooked the speedometer back up. Um, the dash we took out, welded up a bunch of holes that were in it, kind of cleaned it up. There's nothing better than an OE dash. The aftermarket dashes just never fit right. Powder coated the dash black, shortened the grab handle in order to work with the stanchions, powder coated it black, factory dash pad. You know, nothing in here looks custom besides this. So this is an eight switch S-Pod panel and it has your air compressor, front locker, rear locker, front bumper lights, backup lights, um, rock lights, a line lock, and then the extra WFO switch. Cigarette lighter right here, even though it's a resto mod, we gotta have the cigarette lighter. You never know, smoking might come back. Ashtray still in it, ready to roll. Got the factory fog light switch over there, so interior very clean. As you can see, there's some twin sticks down there. Well, that's because we put an Atlas in it, and the shifter looks a little different here too, so NB4500, Atlas transfer case. And then to keep it kind of clean looking and comfortable in here, we always go with the 10 inch best top Tuffy console. Drink holders down here. And then as far as stereo goes in the factory place, we went with the retro sounds, um, Bluetooth, OEM, you know, looking stereo. So stereo works really good. In fact, this USB port right here is uh, for plugging in your phone charging and for uh, linking your phone but it is bluetooth so factory seats with seat heaters seat heater switches right here right at your fingertip for for the passenger and the driver in the back seat we went ahead and just moved the back seat back about three inches or so so that an adult can comfortably ride in the back there so interior of this cockpit cockpit a lot of work was done to make it look original but at nothing is original, everything's been touched. Um, and also it kind of still has that old patina, right? This one is in a show quality paint job, you know, uh, car show Jeep. This is a look like it's still 1985 Jeep. So um, some semi-gloss black on the inside here, and then it has the original paint that it came with. So we're gonna go ahead and pull off up here, get out, and we'll kind of do a walk around of the exterior and the rest of the Jeep. I'll tell you what, one pull out on the highway in a Jeep like this, your adrenaline keeps going for three or four days. It never gets old, like I said. Well, this is Darren's CJ7, 1985. Um, it's actually been a year at the shop. Normally we like to do them a lot faster than that, but things kept compounding and we got behind. So one year from drop off to pickup uh, and a lot of stuff was done. So as you can see, um, it doesn't look 
too, you know, out there. Um, old school 17 inch Mickey Thompson Classic 2s, powder coated black, sitting on 37 inch BFG KM3s. It's got a spring over on BDS springs, Bilstein shocks. So pretty cookie cutter spring over CJ until you start really looking at everything. As always, we like to do one tons, get it over with. Don't worry about breaking axles. So this thing starting in the front, Dana 60 Kingpin front end. And we, we narrowed these to 63 inches wide. So chromoly axles, 35 spine outers, ARBs front and rear, 513 gears. Um, the only way to go on the CJ is our double arms. So you take a look in there. There's our Kingpin double arms, one ton Chevy tie rod ends. See the Bilstein shocks in here. Um, you can see that we hooked the sway bar back up on this thing. So factory sway bar, Heim joints. So it doesn't have an exact disconnect. What you do is you loosen this bolt, you swing the sway bar end link up, you slide it right on this stud here on the shock tower. That's how you disconnect your uh, sway bar when you're going on the trail. Bump stops, kingpin. Um, it also has our frame plates and shackle reversal and some prototype CJ shock towers that we put on this one has 12 inch travel shocks in the front and nine inch travel in the rear. Um, one of the things that Darren said when he was, when we were talking about building this Jeep is, I want to make it look old school, but I want to have everything new. And this is exactly my style. So if you look at the front of this Jeep, turn, turn around here and look at the front of this Jeep. So this is what Jeeps look like in the 80s and the 90s. When I was just learning about Jeeps and I was 15, 16 years old, this is what they were. KC lights, obviously these are LEDs. A worn 8274. Now you'll notice something just like some of our other builds. The 8274 is sunk down in the front bumper. So it's not sticking way up. So what we did is built our custom two by four front bumper, tied it into our shackle reversal kit, and then cut out all the front of the frame and Andrew went ahead and sunk the 8274 all the way down and in. And if you look right here, you can see how tight we are on everything here. So PSC steering box tucked down in there. Everything's cut out, clean, boxed, dropped in. This little detail is a lot of work, but in the end just looks like it's supposed to be, you know? Um, let's go ahead and just pop the cherry right now and show you what's under the hood because this is what everybody wants to see this right here is a bd turnkey engine uh it's a two point what is it a 2005 60 with a texas speed cam um this has drive-by wire uh like all of our builds shroud mechanical fan we went ahead with a wizard radiator this time which is a little different so on our other builds the the radiator hose comes up over the top. On this one, we went with a dual pass. So the two hoses are on the same side, really cleans up the engine bay. Uh, right here, Hydroboost brakes. And we were able to, I mean, this thing is as factory as can be. The horn still works, the factory washer bottle, the factory windshield wiper squirters. Um, right here is where we placed our computer and our standalone harness um, for the six liter LS. It's a Gen 3 LS, as you know. Um, Come on over on this side and you can kind of see the headers. So this has ceramic coated center dump headers down in there. And we do that on all of our builds so that we can do a two into one exhaust. Um, air intake with the Cobra head still clears the mechanical fan and the shroud. And then right here is our switching station that you saw on the inside. So this is a S-Pod Bantam and the S-Pod Bantam uh, is run by that switch panel inside. We uh, didn't have a lot of room here for the air compressor, so we were able to tuck it right where the factory jack went. We did have to get rid of the factory jack. So air compressor here, chuck here for pumping up your tires, runs the ARBs front and rear. Um, but the under the hood on this thing is extremely clean. You'll notice on the firewall, there's no bundles of wires or junk running there. Um, everything has its place and everything fits in nice. We went ahead and did a Borgeson steering shaft as well while we were putting it together. So this engine with the Texas Speed Cam is approximately 
405 horsepower is what it dynoed, you know, at the crank. So it's not a nasty engine, but it, it runs really good. So in order to do that, you got to have the one ton axles. So in the rear, we took a Dana 60 from a late seventies Ford truck, narrowed it and put 35 spline chromoly axles in it. They're semi float one piece shafts has a wheel wood disc brakes, four piston in the rear with a mechanical parking brake. Um, and then also has our torque arm, which is key when you're laying the horsepower down. You can kind of sneak in there and see the torque arm on the axle. Um, and the torque arm is then coupled to the next important thing is our custom cross member. So Andrew built this. This is a two by two cross member with a separate skid plate. Um, has 1350 drive lines front and rear, has a 1350 CV rear drive line, and a 1350 to 1350 front drive line with a long slip. Um, there's not a lot of space in these things. As you can see, the front drive shaft is very close to the oil pan. Uh, it's not easy fitting the LS's in these things. Um, one thing we forgot to talk about is the gas tank. So these Jeeps sip a lot of fuel. So in the back, we have the Genrite 20 gallon gas tank. We didn't move the axle back on this one. So we were able to fit the 20 gallon tank. So it's a skid and aluminum tank. And then it has all of the fuel pump and pickup sunk into the tank. And then we went ahead and also, instead of using the traditional, uh, you know, float style sending unit, we bored a new hole in the tank and got an aftermarket. that's basically like a tube with a ping pong ball that floats up and down so that the gas gauge works perfect. That's always super important on these, especially using the factory gauge. We forgot to talk about the back as well. So in the rear, we wanted to keep that custom OG uh, feel to it. Nothing fancy, no big aftermarket stuff. We, we do like the Hanson bumpers and swing outs, but we decided a less is more on this one and to make it ourselves. So this is a two by four rear bumper bolted onto the back of the uh, frame. And we went ahead and built a very low profile uh, swinging tire rack. So Andrew came up with this and it's a simple pin that pops out. And then you safety here, clamp it, swing it open. And there's your swinging tire rack. And then you can get to the tailgate and tailgate down. As you can see, we took the original paint that he brought it with us and just kind of dress it up a little bit. So we had line X of Rancho, line X the inside of the Jeep. So the whole floor inside is line X, but the paint and body on the outside is how it came to us. And, you know, some of the little details on these tire racks and things that we do is, you know, obviously we've wired the uh, third brake light and license plate light into the back and put a nice little LED backup light here as well. Um, right here, you can see the exit of the exhaust. We always go dual into one. So dual two and a half into single three inch and we corner exit. That's the best way to get the exhaust smell, uh, stop it from cycling back up into the Jeep. Um, as far as some of the stuff we might have overlooked on the inside, um, you can see the whole floor line X. It still has the factory um, seat brackets in here for the front seats, uh, but we did go ahead and add a slide because Darren's wife's a little short, so she can get right up to the steering wheel. We took the factory tilt CJ steering column that was worn out and had it rebuilt. Um, but you know, still has the original Jeep horn button with a little fade to it, so it adds to that old school patina. If there's any chance of you ever rebuilding your factory column over buying a new one, rebuild the factory column for sure. Um, some of the other small, oop, I guess I gotta get in there to move the seat back, there we go. Some of the other small details is, so with our roll cage stanchions here, very hard to get the e-brake to work. So. We bent the e-brake pedal out just a hair. The mechanical e-brake still works and the lever is right here to pull. So we have a mechanical e-brake in this thing, uh, just like factory. Um, you can see this thing was in pretty good shape. The door panels are still nice. Most of this stuff is all original. Um, lastly, we did have to put new seat belts in them. And 
you know, finding good options for seatbelts is not easy. Uh, these are the Crown Automotive seatbelts. And then we extended the, uh, the buckle part of it up so that you can reach it with your fingers with the center console in here. Um, and like we talked about before, as far as the roll cage goes, this is the factory rear roll cage section that we just added our speaker cans and then we welded on our front section of the roll cage to the factory one, stanchions, grab handles, got a LED uh, dome light in there and then powder coated it all semi-gloss black. So just a classic, great driving Jeep. I almost forgot something that's easy for you guys to put on and we did on this. These are the Genrite rock sliders. We trim them down to cover up the fender here and to go all the way to the back. And one of the things that you gotta do that's kind of a pain in the butt is the factory CJ fender has a little bump that keeps coming forward, but it makes the rock slider kind of weak and be exposed here. So we basically nice and uh, cleanly cut that bump out um, with a cutoff wheel and get the slider to come all the way to the front. And then, you know, some other details, we did the blackout hinges, blackout door handles, blackout mirrors. So it's basically the uh, black on black theme with the exception of the front chrome grill that we didn't want to take off for fear of what was underneath there uh, as far as since we weren't doing any paint work. But 37 inch tires, 513s, 400 horsepower, five speed, just a smile machine. Um, so close to the same Jeep as Ken's and so fun. Uh, Darren, thank you for bringing your Jeep down here. Loved building it, every bit of it. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.